love about Wisdom Soup is it, it, especially as my own work has grown, is it gives me a chance to shine a light on amazing practitioners, on thought leaders who might not otherwise, you might not otherwise be exposed to. Because the reason I called it Wisdom Soup is that we, each, as we are on this journey, we are each meant to make our own soup. We're each meant to open our minds up, to expose ourselves to things and to feel our way into what feels resonant with us and what doesn't. So the idea of these conversations that we have is to, to open us to something new that maybe we haven't considered, to see something new that inspires us or motivates us. That And then we can use our own discernment and say, yep, this fits for me, or maybe it doesn't. And that's absolutely okay, that we are meant to go through life understanding us, understanding ourselves. And so this is this is a, a fun and exciting way in a like-minded community of loving people to learn about new things. And I will tell you, this process has grown my own, what I'm willing to accept, it's grown me exponentially. So, uh, so we have someone awesome today <laughs> to share with you. And she's someone I have known actually for quite a while. And I first learned about Melissa as, uh, as an animal communicator. And she's very good at that. Um, but she has a multitude of skills, like many of you do. As you're on the path, you learn more about yourself. And as you reach new heights of awareness, your skills grow and grow. And she has something absolutely delightful to share with us today, something she has discovered about herself as one of her unique gifts. And this is a cool thing that, that we each have unique gifts, that each of you, every single person has at least one magnificent spiritual gift. And what that gift is, is going to be tailored to how you are and how you're built and your personality and everything you've experienced is unique to you. So we can learn modalities, but then we're meant to take that modality and put it through the filter of who we are and have it come out the other side as something unique and awesome that's really meant for you. So she has a unique gift. So, and, and she works with angels, right? She has, uh, and her really, her mission at this point is to help others prepare for the big shift that we're going through by clearing the things that no longer serve them. She's a channel, she's a healer, she's a dream analyst, a dream interpreter, and, and then of course, an animal communicator. And she has this unique ability that has come through to her that she learned about herself to clear programming from others. So this is what she's gonna be sharing with us today. So I'm super excited to introduce you to the amazing and beautiful Melissa. And let me go ahead and spotlight you, Melissa. So welcome, Melissa. I'm so excited to have you here with us. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for that lovely intro and for having um, Wisdom Soup. It's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. <laughs> I will accept yeah. that. Thank you. I love this community. Thank you. So, uh, so I would love for you to to share with us all about this idea, of what you've learned, how you've discovered how to clear programming. Okay. Yeah. So, I thought um, first I could go over what programming is, um, if that works. And so, I'll just um, share my screen and and go. That Thank you. Good? Perfect. That sounds awesome. Okay. Let me give you, make sure, do you have ability to share? Oh, Wendy's gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. All right. So let's start with what is programming? So programming refers to the conditioning we carry from other lives acquire at birth or develop during childhood. So programming um, from other lives or past lives uh, can manifest as unexplained fears or limiting beliefs. Uh, for example, someone might have an irrational fear of water that doesn't correlate with any current life experience, uh, suggesting it could stem from a past life trauma. And so recognizing and clearing this programming can help in overcoming such fears and breaking free from recurring negative patterns. Uh, we pick up programming at birth. Uh, the conditions and energies present at the time of birth can have a lasting impact. And this includes the emotional state of the parents, what the birth itself was like, your health at the time of your birth, and more. And these factors can shape a person's personality, 
traits, challenges, and life themes. So clearing birth programming can help in aligning more closely with one's true self. And we of course also pick up programming uh, from childhood. So experiences and messages received during childhood play a significant role in shaping beliefs, self image and behavior. For example, in, in a child who grows up in an environment where they feel neglected may develop a fear of abandonment or issues with self-worth. And by addressing and healing childhood programming, a person can release limiting beliefs and improve their relationship with themselves and others. And often people pick up programming in even in uh, what they perceive as a pretty good or happy childhood just kind of designed that way that we pick it up. So let's go through some examples of programming. Um, they often show up, programming often shows up as limiting beliefs. A common one is I'm not good enough. So this can come from critical parents, negative past life experiences or reception at birth. So a possible um, impact of I'm not good enough can be self-doubt, uh, not living up to your ability and fear of failure. Another limiting belief that's common is I have to work really hard to make money. And this could stem from past life experiences, family attitudes towards work and money. And it can of course um, create financial struggles, staying in jobs you don't like, um, but you stay there and feel like you have to work really hard at those jobs. So um, people pleasing um, is also another example of programming and it often shows up like if I don't do what people want, they won't like me. Uh, this is often rooted in childhood experiences where love or approval was conditional or from other lives or pleasing others was necessary for survival. And it can lead to burnout, resentment and a loss of personal identity. Another programming is avoiding speaking up. For example, if I speak up, bad things will happen. So of course, I'm just, I'm going to interrupt myself here for a second. Um, I'm, of course, just giving some examples of programming. Your programming is unique to you, and we all have different programming. So if your programming is, if I speak up, bad things will happen, um, it, the origin could be due to um, a household where conflicts were explosive, or from other lives with traumatic uh, events involving conflict. And it can result in unresolved issues, passive aggressiveness, and lack of honest communication. So some more examples of programming might be fear of abandonment. And that can look like when I'm vulnerable, people will leave. Like that would be the exact programming we would clear. Um, and this can originate from childhood neglect, past life experiences of loss or betrayal, or not receiving what you needed from mom and dad at birth. And this fear of abandonment can um, cause anxiety in relationships, clinginess, and difficulty trusting others. Fear of rejection um, is another type of programming. And it might show up like if I'm not my true, or I'm sorry, if I am my true self, I won't be liked. Um, and this can come from not receiving unconditional love at birth or as a child. And the possible impact might be rejecting others before they have the a chance to reject you, uh, which of course leads to not allowing others to get close to you. Uh, programming can also show up in chronic health problems. Uh, for this, the underlying programming would need to be discovered. Um, it could be linked to past life injuries, family beliefs about health, or unresolved childhood trauma. Uh, it can result in a cycle of in illness uh, and difficulty healing. Uh, programming can also show up as negative body image. Uh, and this might stem from family attitudes towards appearance or past life issues involving body or self-worth as well as your reception at birth. Um, it can lead to dissatisfaction, of course, with one's appearance, uh, comparison to others and feeling less than. 
Your programming might also show up in relationships. Um, this can be repeating toxic relationship patterns. And again, for this, the exact programming would need to be determined. Uh, this often arises from childhood dynamics, <clears throat> past life karmic relationships, or learned behavior from observing parents. And it can result in a cycle of unhealthy relationships difficulty and, and difficulty maintaining healthy boundaries. Life um, is a struggle is another um, common programming that I see. Um, and it could it can come from past life hardships, cultural narratives, or early life experiences of struggles. Um, it can lead to a mindset that anticipates and creates struggle, making it hard to find joy and peace. Because as we know, the what we think, we get more of that. So as you can see, pro programming can affect every aspect of our lives. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how my programming gift showed up. So um, some of you guys know um, Janice and you know what a great dream interpreter she is. So I often give her um, my dreams to look at um, and I definitely always give her my dreams when she's in them because, and sometimes we have dreams for each other, but anyway, so I had this dream where I was inside somewhere with Janice and she was on her laptop and I touched an X at the top, right. Um, to close something on her screen, just like you would do, you know, on your, on your computer or laptop. And so she said, oh, well, we know not in the dream. So after I sent it to her, and we were talking about it. She said, well, we know you can clear programming. And so Johnny's also has this cool gift where she can look at a dream and pull your unique gift out of it. So she's really good at that. Um, but anyway, so I said, well, that's cool. How do, how do I do that? And I think she was connected at the time um, to channel. And she said, well, you just go in and boop it. And you just go in and boop it. And so... Um, I tried it and it worked. Um, and so the first client, um, I tried it on, uh, their programming was a lack of confidence and that men had power over them. And so I cleared the programming and you, the programming after it's cleared, it will also show up in your dream that it has been cleared typically. Um, so her dream after the, this client's dream after the clearing show that the programming um, had been cleared and that they had skipped half their karma related to it. Um, and in waking life, this client was no longer bothered by men that she used to think thought they knew everything. And she now had confidence going into work meetings in a male dominated field. Um, and she had a super powerful meeting with her male boss who helped boost her confidence further uh, and gave her tips to be more confident, which uh, was able to occur only after the programming was cleared and her energy shifted. So that was really cool. And another cool aspect of this is that I can also clear pro programming on myself, which is really nice because if something shows up in my dreams or waking life um, that I realize is programming, I can just clear it. So uh, the first programming I cleared on myself was fear of doing something wrong. And um, I had this fear of getting in trouble even when I wasn't doing anything wrong because obviously that happened to me in childhood. So that was programming that I had, that I was going to get in trouble even when I wasn't really doing anything wrong. So even though I had done cutting ties eight times and other healing, this programming still existed. And it doesn't mean those, um, the, uh, the healing I did and the cutting the ties didn't help. It did. Um, you know, we heal in layers often. So, um, but having done all that healing also made the programming easier to pick out and see uh, that it was there. So after I cleared it, um, Michael Sheridan 
did a dream of mine uh, in 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 that dream, it said that the programming was cleared uh, and that it works uh, because I would question like, is this really, does can I really do this? And every time I would question that, I would have a dream saying that yes, it works, it's a thing. Um, and this was shown that this programming was cleared uh, in the dream, I taken a backpack into a store to get repaired, and then I and I left it there. And I there was another bag in the dream that had a sparkly cutout, which was indicating I'm cut out or meant to do this. And in waking life, this was no longer an issue for me. This thinking I'm going to get in trouble all the time. So, just uh, one more example from a client. Um, so the issues I cleared for this client um, was she had a fear of what, of how, like if she said something to someone, how it was gonna affect them. She she would hold back from not saying things because she thought it would um, either lead to conflict or it would hurt the person's feelings or something negative. So there was um, thinking uh, that something she was gonna say was gonna cause conflict. So after I cleared these things for her, um, she told someone that she wasn't gonna go to a party when they texted and asked where she was because the party had already started. And um, she, she said that she wasn't gonna uh, be there. So previously, if she had gotten that text, she said she would have just left, right? She would have went to the party or at least if she didn't, she would have felt really bad, thought she should really go and have this guilt around it. And then after she texted the person and said she wasn't going, she didn't hear back from them. Um, and she had forgot, she was able to forget all about it where before she would have thought the person was mad at her. Uh, another way this showed up in waking life was she was able to email someone and said she wouldn't be at a small group gathering uh, and she wasn't going to do a course that she had told this person she might do. And she said before the wow. clearing, um, she said that this would have been almost impossible for her to say, to say no. So um, it also showed up in Waking Life that she was able to express to her husband two things that he did that she was bothered by. Um, and previously, she just wouldn't have said anything. She just kind of swept everything under the rug. So the, I don't know if these things seem small, but if you're living this, that you know, these are pretty big things to be able to um, express and rather than like live your life um, you know, there's this pleasing, people pleasing aspect in here too that she was able to let go of. Uh, so that was really nice. So how do you know what to clear? So sometimes it's gonna be obvious. Um, like I said, it usually shows up as, lim as limiting beliefs, but if you have recurring problems, conflicts, challenges throughout your life, you know, you can look in there for, um, for the programming. Uh, you know, talking to someone might be helpful to gain clarity. And for those of you that um, know about dream work, dream interpretation, you probably already know that um, our issues show up in our dreams. So our dreams also reveal uh, what programming needs to be cleared because our dreams are always telling us what we need to work on. And um, Johnny's, like I mentioned, I think is able to pull out exactly what needs to be cleared. And I believe in a little bit, she's going to show you how to do this, give some examples of programming and dreams and what it looks like. So how I clear programming is I get my connection, I go up into the light, um, I bring the person up with me that I'm clearing the programming for, and the angels and I clear the programming. So the programming is cleared and then I do what I call a rewrite. And I, I usually do a rewrite and sometimes I'll start with the intention of a re what the rewrite is going to look like, but the angels are like, no, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing that. So they'll change it. Um, but uh, cause they always have the final say. Um, so for example, if your programming is, if I speak my truth, people won't like me, a possible rewrite 
uh, might be envisioning you telling people something and then being completely accepting of you. So it's, it's bringing that, you know, what you want to happen in and the feelings around it um, after we clear, clear what uh, the, the programming. And another example of a re rewrite might be if you have fear of public speaking, uh, we would, uh, you could envision yourself. So if I'm doing the rewrite, I'm, I'm doing the visualization. But if you want to do your own rewrite, you would envision yourself on stage giving a speech, feeling calm and feeling positive energy from the audience or, you know, whatever you want. And when I clear um, programming, I do um, what I, I clear what I call one theme or subject at a time. So if your programming is I'm not good enough, I can clear a bunch of things within that umbrella. Like, you know, I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough, you know, whatever it is. I'm not good enough at my job, but I don't tend to clear a bunch of different subjects at once. So part of, like I said, part of what I do is a, is a rewrite. And you can do this in your own waking life, just kind of what I was talking about. So you would first determine the programming that needs to be cleared. And then you're just going to imagine a better scenario for it. Uh, for example, if you're not confident in your channeling abil ability, you would just imagine doing a reading and your client says how spot on you are, how powerful, how helpful it was. Um, and then you always want to be sure you're feeling the feel, feeling the feeling you want to feel. Um, so, and I would do this in like a, in a meditative state, you know, relaxed state. Um, this way you're getting your subconscious involved uh, with the imagination. It's kind of like when you go back in and, and re rewrite a dream for those of you who are familiar with that. So I think that's all I have for that. Um, do we want to do, Janice, do you want to um, do the dream part? Yeah, I'm totally fine with that if that's helpful. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, so when you're looking at your own dreams, if you do remember your dreams, and I know lots of people don't tend to remember them, um, as mm -hmm. Melissa said, there's Oh, Janice, can you raise, because I'm, I'm searching for you right now. If you could raise your hand oh. to make sure I spotlight you as well. That would be awesome. So people can see. Oh, there you are. Okay. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you just moved. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're running around in here. Trying okay, to I'm at you. the top now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> there you are. Okay, thank you. I just want to spotlight you. Okay. Okay. Okay, hi. <laughs> Okay. Guys, this is um, Janice. And she she and Melissa are not only great friends, but they work together in a lot of different ways. And they both have been uh uh, uh working with our soul convergence program. They're both dream analysts and they both have well, just amazing talents to share. So thank you for joining us, Janice. Oh, thanks. And thanks, Melissa, for sharing the spotlight with me. Um, so yeah, so we work really well together in um I pull out programming from dreams. Um, these are mainly with our birth wound clients and, um, and then she clears it. So it works really well together. Some of the most common things that you all can look for in your dreams are some of these symbols, laptops, smartphones, computers, even books. Um, and also just where in the dream you're making an excuse that's oftentimes programming. And when you have specifics that make it a birth dream, you want to prepare yourself to look at that dream in terms of, okay, where's my programming in here? Uh, some of those birth, certs, um, birth specifics are um, hotels, of course, because that's about your reception at birth. But if you see 
pregnancy in your dream or a baby, those typically mean something else if you're not specifically having a birth dream or specifically going through mine and Melissa's birth healing. So um, you do want to pay attention in a different way if you are doing something like that and you see pregnancy or a baby. Um, a, an example of an excuse, let's say, is, well, I was going to leave the parking garage and go to a party, but there were spiders all over the wheel. So instead, I backed up further. You know, you're making an excuse to bring yourself backwards and to not leave the parking lot and go to a party where also a party is about celebrating yourself. It's like when you're born, that's the biggest deal to you, right? Your time coming onto this planet. So if you're avoiding a party, you're also avoiding um, celebrating yourself. Um, some of the most common themes that come along with programming are, are themes where you don't have conscious memories. And that can be really hard for people to connect with, especially because a lot of these this programming is a birth wound. So what I would say for that is accept it. If it's showing up in your dreams or your waking life um, and you don't have a conscious memory of when that could have happened, just accept it and say, okay, this is a thing that I have. Um, some of those most difficult things to connect uh, consciously with are wounds to your reproductive system. And when I say wounds, what I really am talking about is programming that we put on ourselves because we all have a reproductive system, even if it's been removed for whatever reason, like we still started, we started with the reproductive system and not only that, but we can't even be on this planet without one at least scientifically, I, I think maybe, maybe they could produce somebody without a reproductive system. But the point is that we had to have a reproductive system, at least two of them working together for us to be born on this planet. So one of our biggest wounds is that programming that we put on our reproductive system. For example, um, the reproductive system is a death trap. This was in somebody's dream who experienced the cord being uh, wrapped around their neck and their dreams were clearly showing how traumatic and terrifying it was and how they immediately developed the programming at birth that if it has anything to do with the reproductive system, then that means somebody is going to die or really bad things are going to happen. Another um, programming to the reproductive system is that there's just no redeeming factors about having a reproductive system. And that's, this can cause us to completely disconnect with even feeling like it's okay, acceptable, lovely, beautiful to be intimate with another person. Um. I did have an example. Let's see, this is going to really help you when you're looking at your own dreams to see where your programming is. So there was somebody who there was a female and they were supposed to announce or give a speech about a charity, but she acted as if she had never heard of it. Now, charity is about the dharmic path. It's about all about feminine energy and love and compassion and all this. And this person was supposed to announce something about it. So what happens when somebody is, when you're pregnant, you announce it, right? You have this big announcement about how, how lovely this is to be having this baby. And this person's, uh, the character in the dream was a female and just acted like she had never heard of it. So I've never heard of charity. I've never heard of unconditional love. So that was her programming. Um, and then, um, and then when she wanted to talk to this woman, she said, she doesn't want to talk about it and she will now be throwing up. <laughs> and then she said, I am pregnant. And she was annoyed. So you can see how being pregnant in a dream like this is different than the typical meaning, which is usually about just 
having responsibilities, needing to bring, you know, develop something and bring it out into the world. It's just a different way to, to look at dreams when you're looking at programming and birth. Anything else or any questions that came up or anything I missed, Melissa? No, no, not for me. Um, oh, go ahead, Anne. Oh, nothing just it sounds great. I just was you continue with your flow. Oh, I was just going to ask, um, do you want me to do a, um, do you want to see if we, there's questions or do you want me to do a uh, program awesome. clearing for the yeah. group? I think people would love that. If anybody does have questions, pop them in the chat, but yeah, if you are able to work with the group and do a clearing, I think everyone would be really super into that. If you would rather not participate in the clearing, all you have to do is set your intention that you, you are not participating. But but yeah, if you're able to work with a group, that would be phenomenal. Who's in? And yeah. just one second, and do you have any input for people currently in soul convergence? Or is it okay if they participate, or should they not consent? Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, uh, let me just double check really quick. Sorry. Um, for a programming clearing, uh, so what I'm getting is that there will be it will it will land differently for those who are in soul convergence. So it's it, the key is not to clear the energy, but to bring an awareness to their mind. So if we can set that intention for those who are in soul convergence, they can participate with the idea that it will bring an awareness to their mind, but but it won't specifically move energy, and that's good. Yeah. Okay, so I've never done a group program okay. clearing, so this is going to be like awesome. first time little experiment. Okay. Breaking so, news. Yes. <laughs> um, so do you want to see um, what, like, is, if there's some universe, like, I mean, obviously it's not going to be for everyone, but like a universal thing to clear? Um, yeah. Mm. Or we, just. you Are you looking to kind of tune in and see what would be universally beneficial? Yeah. So yeah, so if you want, I can, if you guys want to tune in or I can tune in, whatever you prefer. Um, you can. Okay. All right. Thank you, Denise, for participating. We appreciate you so much, your input. So um, so let me just take a quick look and just see for the group, uh, for this group as we are today and for those who will be listening in the future, what would be a good cohesive, uh, uh, and there's um, there's not enough for me. Oh, there's not enough for me, like lack, kind of? It's like that. It's like there's not, and that, that what they like is that it's loose enough. There's not enough for me. And then each person can take that and apply it to there's not enough love for me. There's not enough resources for me. There's not enough space. Each person can take that and modify it. But the core, if you, the core truncated belief is there's not enough for me. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So as I mentioned, um, I get my connection. Um, I, I'll, I'll bring the group up and then I'll clear. Um, there's not enough for me. And when I'm doing that, um, I, it's just going to be, it's just going to be quiet. Um, and then I'll, I'll come back when I'm, when I'm done. So for all of you who are participating, um, I would say just relax and see, see what you can um, feel, what you notice. And if you don't feel anything, that's fine too. Um, it's still still happening. And then afterwards we can maybe share some experiences of what people- I love that. And the one thing I would add is maybe we could take, have everyone take a moment to just reflect, to quiet, be quietly reflect on what for you, because you can take this energy that, that Melissa is going to be sharing with us and apply it to what there is not enough of for you. What is, so where would you have that? How would that fit into what you know of your own programming? So thinking about to your own relationship to your parents, what could it have been? So for example, uh, Julie says that she felt like maybe hers was that not belonging or fleeing, feeling alone. So that could be, there is not enough belonging for me, right? Or self-criticism, there's not enough acceptance for me. Um, so, so think about that, apply it to sit for a moment. If everyone is, let's just, how about we do that? Can we all just be quiet and set an intention for ourselves? Does that work, Melissa? Yeah. Okay. So maybe everybody close your eyes for a moment and Janice has put your guys' uh, for the contact information for both Melissa and Janice into the chat. So you guys can reach out to them later, which is awesome. And Andy's saying monetary. So it could be abundance, right? Whatever it is feeling important or relevant. There's not enough acknowledgement for me. So think about that. So go ahead and close your eyes and figure out what it is for you.
right. Feel good. Everybody's got something. So just hold that in your own thoughts. And Melissa, should we go into meditation to have the experience? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Awesome. And then, and then yeah, and then I'll come back um, in a little, a little bit. So are you going to go off screen? Or are you going to stay on screen during the process? Um, I'll, I can stay on screen, but I'm just, I'll mute and. Uh... Fantastic. So if you want to guide us in, if you, I don't know if you just, why don't you take over and guide us into if you want us to be quiet or what works for you? Yeah, I would say um, just get into a nice relaxed state, clear your mind. Um, if you want to ground first, you can do that if you you know the appropriate spot to ground to. And then yeah, and then I'll just I'll just take you up and I'll be back in a little bit.
Okay. Gently come back down. Awesome. How was that for you, Melissa? Um, it was it was good. It was interesting because I've never done a group. Um, so sometimes I felt like I had to like really get everyone up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was good. Yeah. That is awesome. So I will tell you, um, I, uh, so I was, I saw, actually saw you rewriting the programming, which was super cool. And oh, what awesome. I, yeah, what I, what I perceived was I saw, um, I, it felt like my energy went up, I raised up. And then once I was up, it was like a, a sun was shining on me and it was sort of illuminating. And then I saw, it was almost as if I was sitting on top of a, uh, a tablet or some kind of a writing. And then what I saw was, was you come in and it was almost like there was, the writing was interesting because it was in, col in columns like this, like it was almost in another language and it was written sideways, but in these, it was almost like you would read it from top to, to bottom, but you were writing on it sideways, which is very interesting. And you were overwriting what was there. And what was there was kind of coming off like ash, almost like it was decayed and you were writing over in golden writing, which was really, really cool. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was really awesome. It was, and I love that when I have a vision like that, that it comes unexpected because it's a, it's a perception. I can see, I can see you working. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I know. I love doing stuff like whether it's yeah. this or my other healings for people that can see all stuff, because I see, I don't see it in that clarity that you do. So like in some other people can, so it's, it's really, it's always fun to hear, to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great confirmation. And so lots of people were writing in what they were focusing on, which is great because that's really strongly setting your intention for what we just did. That's awesome. And Marilyn said she's so interesting. She had a strong smell of cinnamon during this. I wonder what that's related to. So it could be that it was triggering a childhood memory where there was cinnamon involved. You know what I mean? You just know how those olfactory memories can really recall their, their strong uh, like I, the smell of roses always makes make rose smell makes me think of my grandma on my dad's because she always wore like rose lotion. You know, it's how really they can be powerful memory helpers, memory devices. Um, and John says, besides soul convergence, what about gift activation? Wait till we're through with gift activation. No, it was okay. So thank I'm sorry I didn't answer that first, John. It was okay for either. It's just that idea to 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 hold the idea that you were getting an awareness. Yeah, super cool. Um Phenomenal. Carrie says, thank you. Joyce says, my heart filled with so much love. I love that. We love spreading the love. Claudia says, thank you. Solara says, that was amazing. So grateful. Thank you so much. Janice says, I got asked, how do you want to receive this? So I began seeking what I wanted instead of what I didn't want. Oh, that is beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. It's so important, right? To focus on what we want to create. Thank you for bringing that up, Janice. And you're saying still love and still feeling the energy. Love it. And then uh, she's saying, I love this. I too felt white sunlight coming over me from the top left side of my body. It was, and I, mine too came from the left side or no, my right side, your left it came from my right side. Um, I, and, and I was out of my body. Thank you. So cool. I felt a pulling in my upper stomach. Interesting, Karen. And then Andy says, Akashic writing. Um, oh, wait, I just lost you. Hold on. Wait, just a second. Uh, here we go. It just jumped. Let me go back here. Um, here it is. And then you're saying, yeah, Akashic Reading. I could see a new awareness forming around me. Very cool. I wonder about that, Andy. It did seem like, like Akashic Reading. Like, well, how would things be written down in the language of our soul? You know? Yeah. It, it felt like that to me too. Yeah. I'm glad, glad you named it. Lisa said that was powerful. Totally. Ingrid said, saw a jewel being cleaned in a sonic cleaner. Love it. Um, uh, yeah. And Janice answered, that's clearing out challenges to bring your gifting out. Love it. Love it. Andy says that was very cool. Love it. Phil said working on relationship issues. I'm learning. Beautiful. Kaya says we have all the time we need. Soul has my back. That is the truth. Kaya. Yeah. And I love that, that it's true that I think a lot of times we feel so much pressure to heal our issues, but at the same time, it's meant to be a lifetime of work, right? It's meant to be learning and it's not meant to be, even though we'd like to be done with the hard stuff, if life was, if we had everything we needed all the time, life would be pretty boring. So we're meant to have a few challenges. The one thing I could say is that as we heal the challenges, we still have challenges. It's just, they get easier. It's like you can move through them with more grace. 
And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, beautiful thing. I still feel the top of my head being activated, says Marie. Very cool. Mark says, I felt tremendous energy in my crown chakra and third eye. Very profound. Thank you. Yay, I felt liberated. Awesome. Chrissy says, can we go back to this recording and insert new programming we want cleared? So that's a question for you, Melissa. Can they use the recording to do the same thing? I think so, because I know my program clearing works in recordings. The okay. birth wound healing that Janice um, was talking about, um, part of the programming that I clear is through the recording. So, yeah, yeah. I would just, um, you know, ask um, ask the angels to clear whatever, whatever programming you want to kind of insert in there and have cleared. I love it. Love it. Love it. And uh, Bammy says, it felt like I took an elevator up to the clouds. And then uh, when the doors opened, there was a group of people embracing and hugging me. Isn't that powerful? Michelle says, thank you. I revisited my dream last night that I'd forgotten it and had very positive, powerful messages. Too many to put into the chat. The angels must have known I'd be here today. So incredible, right? Nothing by accident. Isn't it true, you guys? I absolutely love that. Carrie says, first, I felt a jolt in my heart and then a light, uh, a light, I think you said color instead of colon, a light colon from my crown. <laughs> Thank you. You were saying a color, color from my crown chakra, not my crown chakra. Uh, upward, isn't it funny? Typing can be hard. Issues was lifted. I love that. Beautiful. Sonia says it triggered me to cry relating to a trauma from my childhood. That's beautiful release. It's so good. An ugly cry is so healing, you guys. I'm not sure what to think. I just have to hope for healing. Thank you for what you're doing for humanity. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And Patty had the same tears come up. You guys, it is wonderful when you have the, the tears come up, that is energy moving to the surface for release. And that is powerful, powerful. So the more we can just open and let it flow, the better we are. So awesome. Yeah. Any other thoughts, Melissa? Um, no, and just, I guess, um, you know, do those, do those rewrites, um, cause that's, that's helpful. And yeah, just thank you all so much for being here and, um, helping me or allowing me this opportunity to do this group clearing. Like I said, it's the first time. So it's really cool. Oh, cool. And John is asking, he did. So he did. John's in gift activation from soul convergence. And he said he did receive awarenesses of two things that were, that there's not enough for me. That's awesome for getting it cleared. He says, well, wait till after gift activation. So no, what you could do now is, is bring it into your meditation with soul convergence. So just involve the angels in soul convergence with it. And you can, they'll collaborate with what your awarenesses are. So it's a way of bringing this healing into your process. So just now you have that awareness is bring the feelings and everything that came up into your soul convergence or your gift activation sessions. Yeah, very, very cool. Awesome. And then John says, Melissa and Denise would be amazing team to work with. Agreed. And we've got, so so you guys know their contact information is here. And when we post this recording on YouTube, we will put your contact information in the description box so people can find you easily. Yeah, and everybody's getting lots of thanks. Joyce said, thank you, Melissa and Denise. Thank you, says MG Tucker. Andy says, the presence of the right side is a theme for me. I related to being an angel being there. This was present during the session. Very cool. Thank you for this, is Mary Elizabeth. Karen says, thank you. Lindsay says, I'm at work, so missed the, the part of it, but can't wait to go back and rewatch it. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be there for you. Like, like Melissa said, you can use the recording. Super cool. Lisa says, thank you, Cecilia, and everyone, Koi and Anne says, thank you. Awesome, you guys, phenomenal group. Don't you love being with like-minded people? We're like, yeah, we're going to clear programming today. Talk to angels. Yeah, like, yeah good, I'm in. <laughs> it's so awesome. So, I know. so awesome. It's just like a normal for me now that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. We just, it's, it's, it's norm. Sad. This is this is what we do on a, on a, on a Thursday. <laughs> so great. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. I really appreciate you sharing all your journey and how your gifts have expanded and now and trying this amazing technique you have out on a group for the first time. It's so cool to be part of that group, to be to be part of your first group experience. And now that you've worked this so effectively for individual sessions. So, uh, so thank you very much. And I, uh, I just want to remind everyone um, that uh, that you guys are all welcome back next Thursday. And next, it's always the second Thursday of the month for our next Wisdom Soup. So, uh, so we love doing this every time. We never know what's gonna gonna come forward. Amazing things happen in our Wisdom Soup sessions. So, you guys, thank you so much, Janice. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you so much, Wendy, for uh, for all of us together. Who and for all of you for coming and for bringing your awesome energy to this process. All right, sending you guys tons of love and I'll see you guys next Wisdom Soup. Have a great day, you guys.